So we're looking at the vocabulary in Unit 6. This is on pages 150 and 151. I'm just going to kind of go through it and make some comments. The first word, Ike's, Igos, we've talked about before. Note that it can be either masculine or feminine. The other nouns that we've had that are like that are the word theos for god or goddess. Mm -hmm. Just change the article or the, the adjectives that agree with it. And hippos, the word for horse, right? Which can be a ha hippos, a stallion, or just a horse. and Or he hippos, a, a female horse, a mare, okay? Next word is a particle, a really good one, geh, okay? Um, we haven't taught you, it's a word without an accent that's in clitic, but it it's, tells you that it means at any rate, or at least it can also express irony, okay? And uh, it, it expresses, it, it comes after the word that it applies to. Um, we've put on the, on the blackboard there a few third declension nouns and their dative plurals. We talked about how these are formed. But there's gero, the word for old man. Its dative plural is gerusi. There's nux, the word for night. Its dative plural is nuxi. And pragma, pragmasi. Because the you look at the genitive, it's pragmatos. There's a T there. So when you add the T to the S, you get an S. Right? Mm -hmm. The T disappears. And soma, somasi, it's somatos, the same. And so forth. So make sure you understand how these are working. Helene, helese is another one. All right, um, what other words have we got here? We've got the word gnome or gnomes, which means opinion or judgment. Uh, it comes from the same root as English no, with a K, K-N-O-W, manifested as a gamma in Greek. There's denos, dene, denon, an adjective that means fearful, as well as clever. Okay, that seems weird. But if you think about terrible, for example, you can say person's terrible or terribly clever. Mm -hmm. Right, you got things like that in English. Um, this is it's an adjective derived from an old word for fear. Um, more about that some other time. Doulos is the word for slave. Ancient Greeks had slaves. They had the worst kind of slaves, chattel slaves that you know people owned them and they never became adults. So the word for slave is either doulos or guess what, pais, the word for child, because because they never become fully adult. Um, they get sold and bought. Athenians were notorious for being un not not uh, mean enough to their slaves, according to people in other city states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were okay. So, but slaves did amazing things too. It's not really so simple. For example, uh, the main architect of the Parthenon was a slave. <laughs> you have the police force in Athens, such as it was, the Scythians, they were slaves. And this is not our model. Right. But anyway, we, we, they're still slaves, and it's not good. So there, there's the word for slave, doulos, doulou, which is masculine. There's the word for slavery, douleia. That's a regular way of forming an abstract noun is with the suffix iota, alpha in Greek. There's a verb, douleo, which governs an object in the dative, to be a slave to someone. That's what goes in the dative. And it doesn't have a full set of principal parts. Do lao so, do lao so, and do lao come, but there's no perfect or error, perfect middle or error's pass, perfect middle passive or error's passive. You get the word for free to go with the word for slave um, and the word for freedom. So free is eleutheros. It comes from the uh, verbal root that means to go or come. So it's about yeah. originally about movement. Um, so, and, and they give you, they tell you that it goes with the genitive, so that's if you want to say free from something, the thing you're free from goes in the genitive case. Um, and notice it's, a, it's an adjective whose final consonant is a row, so that means that it doesn't have any etas, it has long alphas. Um, um, and the, the, the abstract noun freedom is eleutheria, just like douleia with an iota eta. There is the word Hellene, Hellenos, which means a Greek, a Hellene. We still, that Greece in modern Greek is Hellas, okay, and the people are Hellenes. So, so this is still a word for, for Greek and Greek. The word Greek comes from Latin, Graecus, mm -hmm. um, word of rather obscure origins. It's, it has the form of a derogatory term. In other words, it looks like what the what the Romans called Greeks and they didn't like and. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, so, you know, cultures have nasty words for ethnic groups that they they resent. Yes. 
that happened in antiquity. Anyway, so um, then there's the word elpis elpidos. We learned about the inflection of it, which means hope or expectation for us. That's a good thing in, in ancient Greek mythology and texts. However, hope is something just el elusive and delusional mm -hmm. most of the time and not a good thing. Uh, we get finally the preposition kata, which we have in all kinds of English words like catastrophe, catastrophe, and catatonic, and um, uh, cataclysm, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're thinking of that? What other words come to mind? Catalyst. Catalyst, there you go. Lots of Greek derivative words with kata in it. And it means under, with a genitive, and according to, or along as well with the accusative, okay? Um, both, you should add that meaning to what's given in the book. We get a, a one or two, let's see, we have three new verbs in this lesson. We get, and there are easy ones, they're verbs whose stem ends with a vowel. So there's koluo, not to be confused with keleo, very different, right? <laughs> koluo means prevent somebody from doing something. Um, its principal parts are very straightforward, you could guess them if I didn't tell you. It's just like luo, uh, politeo, which means to, that and kaluo, by the way, means hinder or prevent. There's politeo, which means to live as a citizen, conduct the government, or in the passive, be governed. Okay, all those things are fine. <laughs> Principal parts, again, are just normal. Um, and finally, we get choreo down at the end of the list. That means to take part in a choral dance. Okay, more about that when we get there. Um, other words, we've got the relative pronoun hos he ha. We've got the word for night, nux nuctos, um, which we have uh, cognates of uh, the Latin word for night is the same root. So that's where we get nocturne and nocturnal. But the English word night comes from the same, uh, is the Indo European word for night derived from the same source as Greek nux. There's palaios, palaia, palaion, an adjective of three genders that means old, ancient, or aged, we have in paleography and paleolithic and all those words. Um, pragma, pragmatos, which means a deed, an affair, or a thing. It also means trouble sometimes, ta pragmata. We have English words like pragmatic that come from it. Um, it comes from the, a verb that means to do things. Prato, didn't we have it? Praso? Maybe uh, not. I don't think so, not yet. Not yet. Um, we got the word for wise, safos, safe, safon, uh, another three termination adjective, and the, the abstract noun safia. And we're getting three examples so far of iota, alpha, abstract nouns, dulea, eleutheria, and safia. Um, there's the word that's the standard measure of distance, stadion, stadiu, which is a neuter noun, and translates its state because we don't have anything that's the same. It says around 600 feet. And look at the plural of it. It's ta stadia or hoi stadioi. Um, this, this kind of doubling is originally non-redundant. In other words, what the, the neuter plural with an alpha originally means is a collection of states, a group of states, whereas hoi stadioi just means a bunch of, it means a sequence of them. So, so for example, you have this in Latin, the word for place, locus, has two plurals, loci, which means a bunch of places, and loca, which means a region. Okay, so it's a collective versus a, a plural. Soma somatos um, means a body, a physical body. It can be a corpse, too. Um, what do we have? We have uh, somatic uh, as derivatives of this in English, um, stuff like that. Um, we get the, the conjunction te, without any accent, that means and. Um, in, 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 it's very rarely all by itself in classical Attic Greek. You have a chi with it sometimes. So you have both and that are te and chi. So you say te, x, chi, y. You put the first thing you're connecting after the te and the second one after the chi. Or you can also do x, te, chi, y. You can mm -hmm. do it both ways to say both X and Y. You can put the X, the first member of the pair, before the te, as well as after. So X, te, chi, Y. <laughs> okay? <laughs> exactly. So let's see. We also get the enclitic particle toy, which is the third of these. We've got ge and 
Mount Mount Toy, that means I'm looking you in the eyes when I'm saying this. <laughs> okay, and um, so the book also uses a word Utoy. Okay, that it doesn't tell you about that it is in the dictionary. That's a combination of U and Toy. Okay, with an acute accent and a smooth breathing. That doesn't that doesn't mean this. If you're looking it up in the dictionary, that that word has an H. This is just really not. <laughs> not and I really mean it. Um, the, the next word in the vocabulary is phalanx, the word phalanx, which is a formation of hoplites. That's that's what hap that's what you call a bunch of them going into battle covering up over each other. Fulax, fulakos, we had the verb fulato derived from this, so this is a third declension noun. Um, charis charitos, the word for favor. Um, and notice that it has this really weird thing, that it can be a preposition. Well, it's really not a preposition, it's a postposition. It comes after the noun in the genitive case, that pre that, and it means because of, for the psycho. So there are most of the prepositions, in fact, all the ones we've learned so far, they have the preposition like n or a p or or so forth, and then you have the object after it with a with the preposition charin, which looks like a noun. Okay, you have the genitive before it, so it's an attempt to try and make it clear that it's not the noun charin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got to watch out for that genitive and there's that that comes that precedes it. The last word is choros, choruha, which we translate dance or chorus. Um, it, it's important to understand that this is a social institution um, in ancient Greek life. Uh, it's a group of people usually of the same age. Perhaps there's a trainer who's older, or uh, but it's usually peers of the same age and gender who constitute a choros. And it's not dancing or singing. It's those two things together because the notion of music is Music uh, is this, what we call music, is only a piece of what Greeks call music. Music is words, um, dancing, and, and uh, singing, okay, singing and, singing and dancing together. So that's what a choros does. Um, and it's a, it's a social group. It's for various, has important social functions in Greek. So a chorautes is a person who dances in a choros, or sings, okay, it's not just dancing. Okay, and it's not just saying it's the two together. All right, that's it. <laughs>